uh, Dennis, uh, he's, he ha has a long bio, but he gave me about like two sentences to use in his introduction. Basically, he says he has a passion for the outdoors, which I happen to know for sure. Uh, sometimes you're in your office, right? But, sometimes. Yeah. Usually he's out on the river doing something. He's been uh, practicing medicine for 38 years. As I said, he's really good at elk bugling. Uh, he is presently working on ways of reversing uh, the age back to 25 years and seven years. Thank you very much. I'm going to take notes on this one. Uh, he, he'll be introducing the Harper Restoration System Program, which is live to be 139. That way you can pay more taxes. Isn't that wonderful? Anyhow, uh, I want you to please w welcome uh, Dr. Dennis Harper. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure. You know, you've been an admiration. I've admired you. You've Help me be where I'm at today, and I thank you very much, and I can't say enough Pleasure. about that, so thank you. And welcome, everyone. And we have afternoon time starting, and the light's right in the eyes. I saw Asher looking this way, now I understand why. All right, here's my little thing here. We can start. Oh, there we are. So, why ozone? So, before that, what we've got to start with is the nominal the important female moose in heat. The male moose is very distinctive. And the first time I heard these things in the woods, I thought it was Bigfoot. And since you're in Colorado here, the elk bugling, which I actually won the championship 10 years ago in Idaho, from the Guides Association, and I use a bugle usually, my voice so is fun. Have you all heard of elk bugle before in the wild? How many of you have? Few, good, so you understand a little bit of it. <laughs> so that's the start, so. My passion is for living a life, my passion is to help teach. My passion is to change the world. Ozone has changed my world. Disclosures. I work with PEMF. I work with Airtight. I work with Longevity, Results RNA Products, Utah Cord Bank, which we distribute through uh, dial, uh, Diversified Biological Solutions. So those are the companies I work with. So we're going to talk about detoxing the body first. Now I'm going to tie all this together as we go along, so just watch the ball roll. Eliminate processed foods. What's that mean? I tell patients, get rid of the packaged, canned, processed, period. Glutens and wheats and grains out of the diet, and a lot of it is not just the glutens, but the glycosides. We're seeing more and more about the Roundup. That's into things. One of our farmer friends up there was up spraying his field and he had gabonza beans out there. And if you realize it, before you harvest gabonza beans, you spray Roundup on it to kill the plant so they're easy to harvest, which obviously resides in the beans. So when you get foods, you have glycosides. And I think a lot of our misinterpretation with the gluten is actually glycosides, that not glutens. So I think you'd really be aware of that when you look at that on dietary changes. Sugars and carbs eliminated. We know that sugar is just about as, you might as well pick heroin over sugar. It's safer than sugar. Limited fruits. We cut people off at 90% of their fruits. We, have, we eat a couple pieces a week in between meals. We do not let them eat them regularly. Healthy fats. And again, you've heard so much about the bacon, the coconut oils, the avocados. So realize you do not make hormones without fats. You don't live without fats. Sublingual zeolites to detox the body, that's one option we use. 
There's everything from there to detoxes on the market. There's numerous out there. There's chelation systems out there that work and do that. We have a lot of ways to detox the body. But you can all agree with me, if you want to get a healthy result, you better have the playing field that fits you and makes it work. In other words, change the playing field. You hear me talk about that as we go along here. And you have to do something the patients will do. How many of you have the best solution in the world and you give it to patients and they don't do it? Do you ever have that happen? Never, right? We were on a cruise two weeks ago and I had to laugh, not in a good way. One of the complaints we heard of a lady sitting by us was that this is a terrible cruise. You have to walk too far to get anything done. It's like, oh my God, you got to be kidding. You're on a flipping ship. <laughs> the people on the ship, though, and my wife, surely in the back there is the boss, and she'll wave at you later, entered me in the sexy leg competition. I know. I even painted my toes for it. But what was interesting with the moose call, the sad part was when I got up there and you look at the other swimsuit people out there, it was sad. See young people with cellulite. You see old people with more than cellulite. How sad is that? And what is the reasoning for that? A lot of it they found with cellulite is inflammation of the fat, which is a detoxing problem. So we can help that with dietary changes as we go along. Radiation levels have gone up about six times the last 10 years in the U.S. for different sources and reasoning. That's something to be aware of. Diet considerations. How many of you offhand put patients on a pretty strict dietary program? You raise your hands. How many of you use diet in your practice? So not many of you. That is something that's so important. If you're not doing it, you're missing the boat. I don't care if you're doing 10 pass. I don't care if you're doing stem cells. I don't care if you're doing ozone. You need to have the body in the best condition possible to get the best results possible. Fresher items are better. Eliminate all processed foods. Then again, the wheats and the glutens, the carbs and the sugars. Limited fruit. Healthy fats, bacon, coconut oil, avocados. Air and water. How many of you use your ozone machine to clean a room out in your house or your car out? That's good. Should you be using it? Yes. Should you be ozonating water and drinking it? Yes. We don't think a lot of times how bad our water is and is not. The electrical balances in it, the contaminations. They found in the Seattle Bay fish with high contamination of drugs. So drugs are being flushed down the toilets, down the places. It's not filtered out of the water, if you realize that. They only test for certain parameters in filtered waters. So realize that your waters probably are generally contaminated. So really look at water. Be real safe about looking at, at decontamination systems also. Your ozonated water is a good source. Some other ideas are good also. Now, cancer. Cancer is obviously present. We hear it. We see it. We get our friends get it. Our relatives get it. By keeping your blood sugar below 90, you reduce your cancer risk by six times. Is that something doable with patients? Not when they're on Lipitor and they have blood sugar problems, but after we get them off the Lipitor and we get them off those things and we get that blood sugar down, that's something we can do. This I've put just for mercury. We were in Taiwan speaking last year, met with the top medical people in Taiwan. They're having high incidence of early onset strokes of young males. And they said, what's the reason? And Dr. Cochran and I were sitting at dinner. We're looking at the lunch they brought us. We have shark soup, shrimp, tuna, all this stuff on the table, right? What does shark have in it that you shouldn't be eating? Mercury. Taiwan has mandatory vaccinations. What's in vaccinations? Mercury. Where does mercury deposit in? And there's some really good studies on it. I came back and looked them up. In the arteries. It 
makes the arteries less pliable. So we actually take and we're causing artery hardening in younger people with mandatory vaccinations and eating heavy mercury foods. These are the mercury listing foods you want to look at. Is that important? I do malpractice reviews, one of my hobbies, and I've done it for 35 years. I do probably six cases a year for Northwest United States. And in the chiropractic profession, the big deal is that the arterial dissections. We're seeing them getting younger. So in 20 years, if we require mandatory vaccinations, put that much mercury, and we put food that's contaminated with mercury in it, what are we going to find with that issue in the next 10 to 15 years? As a patient, you're going to be able to be able to touch that patient without some incident happening. That's not a good place to be at. So think about that and detoxing that mercury. So detoxing. This is something I enjoy and I'll talk about here and someone was asking me. We are very big on doing prolonged fasting, intermittent fasting. My wife and I last year did seven weeks in a row of three days every week of just magnesium and salt. So if you do fasting, you want magnesium and salt. Those are two big deals to do with your fasting and water and beer and donuts. Oh, wait a minute, forgot, not the beer and donuts. And I have patients say, well, what do I get to eat when I fast? It's like, <laughs> you don't eat when you fast, sorry. There's no food allowed when you fast. So now there's a lot of intermittent fasting, there's mimicking fasting. I would encourage you to put every patient on a mimicking fast or a, a traditional fast. I have patients do one day a week at least for three weeks in a row, and I have them do one week, one, the third week or fourth week, they do three days in a row. So one day, one day, one day, three days. And then we try to get them come back on healthier foods. So we get them on salads, we get them on steam, we steam vegetables, more water in their diets. So realize, very, very simple procedure. Why isn't it caught on? Nobody makes any money at it but we want to help patients. This is cheap. People will do that. And the interesting thing at the bottom line, if you read at the bottom here, the findings in uh, the fasting basically says it regulates hematopoietic stem cell production, protection and self-renewal and regeneration. They've gotten tremendous results with people on chemotherapy, for instance, do amazingly better with fasting during the process they found that the fasting will actually double your hormones after several months. So if you're low testosterone, fasting is a big deal. If your female hormones are out of whack, fasting is an important thing to do. And thyroid function potentially increase. Key nutritional points. Again, patients will say, what can I do? Rectal ozone is a great thing to do. So think about it. We are a sliding scale of economics of what patients can do. We can get rid of the junk. We can give them a simple detox. We can do rectal ozone for them and fasting. Huge things. Doesn't cost them a lot. Good place to start for patients. So hyperbaric 10 pass. Uh, Doc Schellenberger, one of that. Dr. Hani did a great job of that. Asher's got a great tool that works with the 10 pass. Use it in the right places though, but it preconditioned the body to make it work. So with that said real quickly, I passed out some papers you'll have there, some you'll have, if some of you don't, I can send it to you, don't get it. I just wrote a paper on preconditioning we'll have published here shortly, so you'll get the paper before it's published. It talks about the things and it applies to doing 10 pass, it applies to doing stem cells, it applies to doing injections for joints, Make the plane feel as healthy as possible, all right? NSAIDs and steroids. When Dr. Milgram was talking about the lady losing the hip joints, it reminds me when Celebrex came into play. Now, I'm getting close to 40 years in practice, so I got to watch this all evolve over the years. I remember a patient coming in, favorite lady I treated. I was treating her back and her neck. She had a hip and a knee that was sore. They put her on Celebrex, amazing drug. Her knee pain and hip pain was gone. She was ecstatic, right? In a year and a half, they replaced the knee and the hip. NSAIDs, steroids, stop stem cell production of your own stem cells. So if you want to regenerate a joint and have ozone stimulate your stem cells to activate, 
they have to be off of the NSAIDs and the steroids. Vitamin D levels. This is another big deal. If you had a patient with a vitamin D level below 30, I guarantee if you do a, I'll call it a stem cell is the last time I'll use that. I'm gonna switch terms to what's called biological allograph. I don't want to hear you say stem cell to me ever. Biological allograph. And there's reasons why as I'll talk about it. If you're gonna do a regenerative procedure on a patient and you do not have their vitamin D levels above 30, it does not work well at all. So you watch for failure levels, that's where you're gonna see it. So we'll boost the levels to 50 to 70, and just a little note of that, in studies they found that cancer rates drop by five times if you keep vitamin D levels above 70. And K2 must be added to it, and there's more particulars to that. I'm giving you just some basic brush strokes here on this things. Magnesium, I put every patient on some sort of magnesium. Yes, there's different ones out there, some are better. I do what they'll do. I give natural calm, we sell the heck out of, tablespoon every night before they go to bed, a tablespoon in the morning until they get the squirts and have them back off. It does well. It solves a whole myriad of problems. Hormones. I always like the hormone joke. How do you, no, I'm not going to say it. Um, look at ideal ranges, not reference ranges. I've seen so many times a patient will come in with blood work and said, my doctor said my hormones are fine. Great. Your testosterone's at 225 and you're fine? And you're 70 years old? No, why not make it 900? So look at reference, uh, ideal ranges, not reference ranges. Hashimoto's, you guys see more Hashimoto's in the last 10 years? Is it out of control? Is it underdiagnosed? Yes. We have a sheet of paper, we do blood work, we do eight different panels for thyroid. The basic panels doesn't cut it. We also take and have them fill out a sheet. It's one page, check off yes or no on all symptomatology. Our medical doctor treats our thyroid stuff not only by blood work, but by symptomatology. So realize you've got to look more at thyroid conditions and function. Now you can use pellets, we use pellets, we use trochs, creams I'm not so big on, and fasting will help balance the hormones. Biological allografts. We have seen thyroid numbers improve from people that have had their thyroid taken out and actually regenerating thyroid tissue. I don't have the studies on it yet, but we've seen the blood work. We're having to drop thyroid supplementation down dramatically because we're seeing that increase. And when I show you where I inject, you'll understand why. Charging the cells of the body. Now again, I'm into basic things. So PEMF we use, there's a Beamer unit out there. There's several different units to recharge the cells of the body. We know for a fact that the pulse rate of the earth has dropped by between 60 and 80 times since the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs grew to large sizes because their cells were charged up at a much better rate than ours are. Our charge is being decreased all the time. Honestly, being these buildings bad, these lights are bad, even the new LED lights can screw you up. And of course, we got the EM pulses from our 4Gs and our 5Gs coming. Doesn't help anybody at all. That takes the pulse and strength the cell away. So we want to change and recondition that. Shockwave, we use a shockwave for ED and sexual function, prostate, and to break up calcium in joints. EM waves, I wear an EM canceler all the time. There's several out there, some are better than others. Test yourself and see how they work. And this is where I said about the, the pulses. You need to charge the cells for positive health. Collecting the energy from the earth. I saw a really great seminar put on by an MD last year was on earthing. If you guys are familiar with that and seen anything like that, they'll take a stake and pound the ground and wrap a wire, wire, wire around the leg and have knee pains go away. And I'm a big believer. We do our advanced class. This is one of the areas we do lectures at our advanced class. We take doctors out and sit them in the dirt. I call it dirt time. And the point is very simple. If you don't ground yourself back to the earth, that's the best source of energy you can get. And we live in a concrete jungle. I don't. I live in a town of 3,000 people. I refuse to live in the other places. That's Gary. You know, recognize him. Mental balance and health. This is my favorite. 
In five years, you become the summation of the people you meet, the books you read, and the TV you watch. How many of you watch the news this morning? Good, nobody. I watch um, Star Trek and X-File reruns. And I'm a YouTube junkie, I admit it. I love travel, and I watch my YouTube when I stand on the vibration mat. I do my exercise on the vibration mat every morning, which I love that thing. It takes, in, takes lymph drainage, helps tone, and then my wife and I do four miles in the evening of walking and heavy running and, well, light running. Dirt time. Find a place you can reconnect to the earth. So there's something you can do next week. Set a couple days a week. You spend 30 minutes sitting in the dirt somewhere. That sounds silly, but seriously, reframe that. Read positive books. So a recommendation, a real fun one, is barking up the wrong tree. It's a fun, easy read. I get audio books, and I listen to them when I travel. And I feel so good doing that. Hang around positive people. So in five years, you become the summation of the people you meet. Do your friends drag you down or build you up? Do you need to reframe that a little bit? That's a horrible decision. I actually divorced my last wife four years ago because I was stressing myself so much and beating my head against the wall for years. It gets old. Change that in your life. Sometimes it's a hard decision to do some of those things, but for health-wise, most beneficial. Spend seven minutes a day being thankful. Now, it sounds silly, but they found, there's actually a study out now that says that if you go at the end of the day and are thankful from your, for your day, that it actually rebuilds brain cells. There's actually a real study that shows that. So I go to bed every day saying, this is the best day of my life. I got to speak and meet the most awesome people in the world today. How can I beat that? And tomorrow's going to be better. Tomorrow morning, I'll be in Miami. I speak at 8 o'clock in the morning in Miami at another conference tomorrow. But what a wonderful life. Every day is amazing. Things that happen are just things that happen. Nothing is good or bad. They're just things that happen. I was talking to our attorney friend here, and I do malpractice reviews. So I talk lots of doctors through malpractice stuff. And those are just things that happen. The chances of one fight getting filed against you is huge. But it's just something that happens. And you need to learn to frame everything that way in your life. So otherwise, it's, life eats you up. There's no point. You can decide differently. You're laughing. <laughs> give freely without expectations and comes back tenfold. Can you freely give and expect no return? And by doing that, what happens is things come back in different places. If I talk to Frank here, and I expect something from Frank, and he doesn't give it back to me, I'm going to be pissed at Frank. Does that do us any good at all? Frank needs something from me, I'll give him whatever he wants. And you may walk up to me and say, Dennis, you did an awesome thing with what you're doing over here. I'd like you to do this. Learn to give. Balance in everyday life is the best. This is one of our good friends here. I married them three years ago. I'm also a minister. I mean, I, he didn't put my references, but I actually got two doctorates and a minister and a state senator. So you can call me doctor, senator, minister, doctor, whatever you want. Or hey, you works good too. So we spent three days. Brendan cannot sit down to save his life. So we sat him down there for three days watching the deer, the eagles, and the river go by. If you're not planning every three months, three days out to get your head together, you won't get your head together. So I want you all to plan in the next three months, a three-day weekend, not running on ragged, getting some peaceful time, all right? So age with beauty and grace. We're here to learn about ozone and treatment. We want our joints to work, all our joints. Sexual health, is that a joint? No, probably not. Aesthetics. So those are all issues that we need to make function properly. 
And we know with ozone, we have an amazing ability to affect joints in a huge way. Sexual health, we go through, we've got all these things we do. BAs, PRP, ozone. Uh, we can take drugs if we want to. Viagra, Cialis, Trimex. Primary focus is health of the blood vessels and sexual health. And don't forget to address the hormone issues when doing sexual health. How many of you actually do sexual health clinics? Any of you do any of those here? And there's so many neat options out there with combinations. Basically, the, the treatments we're seeing between using ozone, allografts, and pulse wave, 95% improvement in ED. Prostates, we're seeing reduction of prostate issues. How many of you injected a prostate with ozone? How many of you have done that? Okay. You can inject the, the prostate. It takes like 15 seconds at the most, and just a little prick and you're done. Simple injection, amazing effects with that. So penile injections, have you guys injected scrotums or testes? Well, with sperm counts, you can actually inject a testicle with ozone. Have you guys done that, anybody? Anybody want to sample it? Oh, there we go, we're gonna sample, we'll do a demo here. <laughs> Joint health, ozone, PRP, biological allografts, stem cells, exercise programs. Okay, so when I started my original journey on this procedure, I started with ozone with Dr. Frank here. And I had a blast. And I was petrified when I went back to my clinic because I hadn't touched a needle in 15 years. In Idaho, we can inject and do IVs and a lot of things. And I went back and I diligently got all the stuff and signed up like 30 patients to start. And I was charging 50 bucks a piece. I did 5,000 my first month of doing injections, went back to my office. I had a pretty substantial chiropractic clinic, but I couldn't treat chips and knees and joints. And since then, we found that we eliminated neck and low back surgeries just by doing ozone upwards of 90% reduction of surgeries. And I went back seven years and did our numbers. I was sending 14 a year for neck and low back surgeries. And the surgeon loved me because when I got, he got my patients, he knew they needed surgery. He said, there's no doubt you're my best diagnostician out there. I didn't send him anywhere for like two years. He called me up about a year afterwards, said, did I piss you off? I haven't seen anybody from you. So I'm telling about this ozone thing. Of course, he didn't believe me. But um, it's interesting, surgeons are changing now. They're not getting paid as much for surgery. I met with the top surgeon in Southern California three weeks ago at dinner with him. He wants to start using ozone. And I'm presenting a study. I finally have all the data. I have MRIs going back on a stenosed low back. Just with ozone treatment and with the amino acids we shoot, we actually have improved stenosis over a seven-year period. So I'm going to have that study. I'm going to write that report. I'm in the middle of doing it. And I'm going to use this surgeon in California to help me put his name on it too. So... You'll see that come out soon. PRP. PRP is a fun addition. We started years ago introducing PRP with ozone, and we use a clot matrix instead of straight PRP, which is a little different, and it collects more cytokines and thrombocytes than standard PRP. We found that effective, and then we use biological allografts with ozone, and I'll explain why as we do as we go along here. It does amazing to do that. Ozone and allografts work together is way better because I've seen so many people get allografts or they call them stem cells, shoot them in the knee and not get results and wonder why. If you don't cause a cascade effect in the system and don't precondition the body, you will not get results. So you damn well better be sure if you're going to use those products, you have a procedure and protocol to get you the maximum results you need. So rebuilding the body. You need to learn about, I'll call it stem cells. I have a handout that I gave out on preconditioning. Some of you have that. Some of you have a place where we purchase ours. We'd be happy to help you where we can. We have a discount for everybody for the next month or so that comes to the conference here. Save 30%, which is a hell of a good deal. We want to stimulate your own stem cells to reinvigorate. So remember, we're stimulating your stem cells. We're not having someone else's stem cells engrafted into your system. Realize we do a PRP. Anything that's a stem cell product in that is only metabolized. It's not engraft. And I hope you all realize that. You're looking at stimulating your stem cells to act like brand new. So don't forget that. Add all the essential nutrients. We make sure we use amino acids and glutathione. And we do IV pushes every week or two. We do rectal ozone, and then we use a 
about 15 amino acids, uh, glutathione, magnesium, and B-complex. We try to get patients on them every two weeks. It's an IV push. It takes uh, four minutes. That's what we use in our office with rectal ozone. It's easier for office. It serves us well, and that's how we do most of our treatments. So out with the old, in with the new. This is one of my toys. So if you get to come up with me, you can put on one of my toys here. So the trick is, you want to rebuild your body back to age 25 and seven years, you kind of got to get rid of the old stuff, right? You want new, healthy cells built. What can we treat with what we're doing? Alzheimer's, anti-aging, COPD, cardiovascular, asthma, arthritis, kidney failure, MS, Lyme's, muscular dystrophy. I got two good cases I've just seen in the last couple of weeks here. We did a COPD patient. We did three treatments on him. He's now 110% on his oxygen. He couldn't go out the tank. He can act bowl now again. He's happy as hell because his diagnosis was going downhill. We had a Parkinson's patient after six weeks, three treatments, 14 years of Parkinson's, she's 85% better. She's walking to the gym with no, she couldn't even, she had that horrible freezing gait. Freezing gait's gone, she's able to walk and exercise now. She's off to Hawaii for a month. You know, we're seeing results with things, but we're also very, very big on preconditioning bodies and doing that. Acute care. This is other in this whole net of things we're gonna, gonna talk about. Low back, strokes, COPDs, cardiovascular, kidney failure. We found with, again, the allografts with two IVs, we've stopped people from having kidney transplants. It reverses the blood work and they just keep improving for the next two years after that. So we had a couple of them we're doing and watching. But just with two IVs of allografts and we're seeing kidney failures re reversed. So we're seeing those kind of things. Asthma, we have a procedure for actually nebulizing allografts. Does amazing with asthma. And IVs does it. Just so you know that you were talking earlier about why would you use an IV with the hips. That was a question for Dr. Milgram earlier. When you put an IV into a person of allographic tissues, or a stem cell procedure, we'll call it, or allografts, they're metabolized 80% immediately by the lungs, kidneys, heart, liver. So realize they don't get to a lot of the areas in the body when they go that way. So you're not going to have that work that well. RA, OA, diseases, spinal condition, those are all degenerative conditions we're going to treat under our loop of getting better. So to preset the body in basic review. Clean eating, detox the body, glutathione is essential, oxygen. We get oxygen, as they're saying, with the ozone. We get oxygen in treating areas. We need to breathe clean air. Those things need to happen. NSAIDs need to go. Intermittent fasting or, or extended fasting. Moderate exercise. I used to give patients this big stack of exercises every time they came in and, go, and spent 10 minutes going over with them. How many of them did it? 0.3% do them after three weeks. I quit doing it. So I say, well, can you give some exercises, doc? Yeah, get off your couch and walk 15 minutes a day. You do that every day for a week, and I'll give you some more exercises next week. That's where I start with it. So get them off their tail and moving. Reduce stress. I love this one. How many of you are totally stress-free stress and are the happiest you've ever been today? Raise your hands. Good. That's more than I got last time. I saw out of 50 people, nobody raised their hand last time when I talked a couple weeks ago. Does stress eat us out alive? Yes. Time to change that picture. Make a plan and follow it. I challenge all of you today to make a plan and follow it. I gave you some basic things here. Make a plan and follow it. Now this we go to the human body. It's all connected, people. You can't fix one thing without affecting something else. So fix the whole body. So truly rebuilding the body, detoxing, diet, hormones, chair charging the body, mental balance, age with beauty and grace, a business model for a practitioner. That's something we're all short on. I hear a lot of us struggling with those issues. And here's my big deal. Choose left or right. 
If you go to my website halfway down, I spoke at Harvard last year. I spoke, spark, speak at Harvard again next month. Look at my Harvard speech. It's six minutes. I think you'll enjoy it immensely on choices. So what is ozone? We know what it is. It comes after lightning. Pathways for ozone, those you like the, those numbers and things. We know it's O3. And we know that uh, it has some pharmacological mechanisms of action and it has mediators. In other words, it, it causes a whole bunch of things to happen. And those are the technical things we use like that. And the biggest thing about ozone that I like, it's cost effective. And I believe that every dentist and doctor should have an ozone machine in their office. If you don't have one, get it, learn how to use it. Now this is a fun one, I want to show you this. We did a injection with a clot matrix and ozone and actually a biological holographic stem cell product. I want to show you what it spreads like in the neck. These are two places we inject into the neck, C3 and C5. And you notice we set the needle too shallow to start with there. Oh, there we go now, shoot, sorry about that. Back, 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 back. Okay, so there are, those are inch and a half needles. You can see they're in for an inch, it's a very small neck. And you can see after we inject it and then inject the ozone behind the dye, you're getting coverage on four segments with two injections. I don't know if many of you guys have done that with dye, but it's kind of cool to see. It really tells you where things are going. And there it spreads even more as you put more ozone. So when I do an allographic injection, I'll put I'll less procaine because it screws up your allografts, very little procaine. I will then shoot a little bit of ozone, let it sit for two, three minutes, especially in a joint. The ozone, what's it caused to have happen? It immediately metabolizes. It breaks up the tissue and causes, I call it roughing up the joint a little bit, is a good word for it. Then I put my allographic material in. So by doing that, I've signaled the body, start coming to that area, cause a cascade effect of building its own resident stem cells to rebuild that joint. Then I put a little ozone when I follow it up. Because what's resident afterwards is oxygen. And we use a small amount of glutathione with our injections because glutathione and oxygen are two major helpers in getting your stem cells to act like brand new. So we want to cheat as much as possible and give as much stuff in there as we can. Here's a knee we saw regenerate with ozone. And again, this was two injections. And a year later, we saw a kind of regeneration. And it's funny, I sent the man to his um, surgeon. And in July of 2010, I, and I said, don't tell him what you did. Just have him take an x-ray. He was supposed to get it replaced. And a surgeon looked at it, put the film up, said, oh, it got better. It happened sometimes. Threw it down and walked out the door. <laughs> Fun stuff. So ozone is key with rebuilding the body. So learn ozone. Mix allografts with ozone. Learn the truth of stem cells. And I'm going to tell you something really fun. This is the 85 65 20 rule. I learned this years ago, and it kind of fits. If you get a patient that comes in with one or two complaints, they have a 20% chance, excuse me, 85% chance of getting better. Three to five complaints, 65% chance of getting better. Over six complaints, a 20% chance of getting better. So realize you got to look at those people a little differently. I will, when I get a patient that comes in with eight places or hurting and a bunch of stuff, I do a very simple adrenal reset. All the symptoms go away immediately. Then I can sort out what the problem is. We do uh, six plebs with around the, the side here with uh, procaine. Immediately their pain's gone. Then we can sort out what problem I actually treat. Because you notice people with eight or 10 complaints, you start treating those problems, none of them get better. And you're chasing all the time. So go to core problems all the time. Now, I'm going to stretch into areas you guys have not seen before. Brown fat injections. Do you guys know what brown fat is? It's on the turkey gravy. You mix it and pour it over the dressing. Isn't that brown fat? No, it's... Brown fat in the body is the highest concentration of resident metabolically active stem cells in your body. As you grow past 18 years old, it concentrates under the clavicle and in the groin. Younger ages, it's between the shoulder blades also. So when we get autistic kids and we use allografts on them, 
which we've got an amazing results. We actually inject the brown fat between the clavicles. We're not even doing IV on them. I mean, you get a 12-year-old with autism, try to do an IV on them. Is that any fun? It's not fun. You can actually sit them up there, get a, a nurse from the doctor with you. You pinch up the skin, half-inch needle. You poke it on a one time, and you're done in five seconds. And amazing results. So brown fat injections, I'm going to show you something here. Here's the brown fat under the clavicles. And you can see how concentrated it is as we look at the bottom here, these areas. And I'm going to show you a slide on this right now, how it's done. So you're going to get your bonus here. Here we go. I'm not going to put any sound with this, don't need to. So what we're doing with her is we're inject, injecting the brown fat. So we go right, we go to the midline, we go two inches to the side, go over the carotid artery, pinch the skin up. We use a half inch needle. We don't use over one and a half cc's of product when you do a sub Q shot. And we use a Regeneron product, which has a glutathione and 15 amino acids. And we use up to one cc of biological allografts on each side. Now, what's interesting about that, we're doing this for our Parkinson's patients. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. But if you stimulate the body's brown fat to activate, it metabolically enhances your own cells to increase its resident stem cells and will go to an inflamed, irritated part of the body. So we'll shoot an ozone in maybe three or four joints, not put allografts in those, stimulate this area. We've signaled the body to tell it it's got pain and irritation. So those metabolically active stem cells of your own will activate and go to those areas. And we find dramatic results doing that without having to put allografts in every joint. So realize there's ways to, to, to do this way easier than you've been doing it. And you may use two, three CCs of ozone, two or three cc's of ozone at 20 gamma and stick a little procaine and ozone in a joint. And you're amazed what you'll see by doing these kind of procedures that way. Very simple procedure, a little poke, half inch needle, 27 gauge needle. We shoot half on each side there. What's interesting about it, you get one heck of a head rush out of it. You'll feel it go up to your head and immediately it causes this rush because we know, and I figured this out after watching uh, one of the guys back east doing Parkinson's and he was going into the suboccipital region under ultrasound and injecting the muscle suboccipitally with, with a biological allografts product. But he had to do it radiographically guided because he was the, the vertebral artery and uh, circle of Willis's right there. And I didn't want to go there and do that. That's too complicated. So I thought, wow, I can go right by the carotid artery, shoot this stuff, and I'm going to show you transmigration in a minute. You'll understand what I'm talking about and why it makes sense. But with that, we're seeing amazing results with it. It's easy. It's safe. And it helps. So we're going to go right into, and again, I'll show transmigration, but I want to talk about neurogenesis. There are studies showing right now that you can actually regenerate the complete brain. Never knew that before, did you? They're always told before in school that if it's done, it's done. But we're actually seeing changes in the brain. Uh, just to go back a little bit, in Salt Lake, they were actually going into stroke patients, drilling the brain, and putting allographic tissues right on the areas of stroke and getting them to heal. So there's some interesting stuff going out there. So watch the research. So this is the foundations of neuroprogenitor cells. Um, they can, stem cells can divide indefinitely to produce more stem cells or differentiate and specialize into neuroprogenitor cells. Do you guys know that before? So if you can stimulate and precondition your body and inject in the right area to cause a chain reaction, what are the chances of regenerating your brains back again? It's possible. This is the basis of neurogenesis. We have the neural stem cell, goes to the glial cells, progenitor cells, and goes and causes the neuro changes in the neurogenesis. Fun little simple slide, but it says a lot. So putting the circle together, an injury, acute or induced ozone. Inflammation, swelling with native stem cells, recruitment. We want transmigration of stem cells. I have a slide coming up next on transmigration that you'll really understand this, what I'm talking about. Blood supply, you need blood supply. If you inject all the goodies into something with no blood supply, you will get no response. You need blood supply to change it. So a lot of the people are taking and putting um, exosomes or allografts directly into the spinal cord and shooting them in. Okay, one that's risky, and I don't want to do it. 
But if you get the body's own cells to put its own cells to cross the blood-brain barrier and regenerate that, is that a better way to do it than going right into a spinal cord? So why not do it a safe way? Build healthy tissue, not scar tissue. Realize, if you're getting a degenerative joint, you need to stimulate an active irritant to cause a regeneration. So realize, get that to regenerate. You need to start this reaction, chain reaction to occur, right? This is a slide. This is worth, this is worth the trip right here. Now watch this for me. So what we've seen with this, and I've got this slide, we've seen the arterial system here. And we know that when you, when you stimulate stem cells in your body, they actually attach the capillaries, and then what's called a transmigration. Transmigration is that you will actually see cells, and they got them marked here, like these right here, they go right across and they go to the injured site. So it's called transmigration. So if we stimulate the body to release its own stem cells, it releases it to the bloodstream that goes to the capillaries, then transmigrates regeneration and dedifferentiation across to the injured area. That's the science behind what's going on. Does that make a lot of sense? So understanding tissue viability, more cells on CC. Okay, I do not play the game of cell counting. None of the products on the market, I don't care what they tell you, None of those cells end graft, they're all metabolized. What you get out of it is the soup. That's what stimulates your stem cells to act like brand new, so just keep that in mind. And I'm very simple when I talk to a patient. We're injecting a product into you that stimulates your stem cells to act like brand new. We're gonna precondition the body so that it makes more healthy cells than sick cells, period. Very simple conversation. Fat and bone stem cells produce the same results. They do not. So if I'm 70 years old and I pull out my fat cells out, how old are my fat stem cells? 70. Do I want to use that or some brand new ones? I want to use some that's going to stimulate my cells to act like brand new. I don't want them to act like they're 70 years old. I'm already there. So at birth, one of your stem cells will produce one billion healthy cells a month. At birth, it's a billion, it's a few. By age 60, one of your stem cells produces 200 a month. So you need to activate the body's own stem cells to regenerate. As we sit here right now, you're losing 300 million cells a minute. So you're listening to me for an hour. How many cells are dead in you? A lot. How many are being reproduced? Well, for 60, it's like that, unless we're stimulating the body to produce those more cells. The body rebuilds all the cells in five to seven years, hence my rebuilding the system in seven years. My wife and I do allografts every six weeks to four weeks, depending on where we're at. And we've done them IV, we did them into joints, we did them into the, the, the uh, brown fat. And, you know, we feel amazing. Now, that doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I don't care. I feel good and I'm happy to do it. And it's a balance. There are no known cell surface markers that can identify pure stem cell populations. It has to be go through a system. It takes about six months to do it accurately. So companies saying they have 30 million stem cells or something is generally not accurate. And we use David Harrell. He's probably one of the top three stem cell people in the world. For our advice, he works with Kaplan. They're on the same committees. And if you want advice, we can hook you up with him and he can talk your head off on what you do and don't know. So look at good, knowledgeable items when you look at that. Business model. Put all the items into play in your office. Look at cost results, effectiveness of procedures. I tell people, Look at your per office hour of doing business for a procedure and see if it makes you any money or makes any sense. Some office procedures you'll do will be loss leaders that you're just gonna lose money on and that's okay. Some you'll make a lot of money on. So you need to evaluate your office if you've not done that. Use prevention as a basis for all treatment. It's so easy to get sucked into pain relief systems. But prevention can be something that you need to eventually educate your patients on. Okay, your knee's gonna go bad maybe in 10 years. 
Well, what, what can we do now? Exercises, orthotics, inject the knee a few times, put you on allografts every year, Nutrient IV every two weeks or a month. Fasting, diet, detox. Think about that. Put that into effect. Add ozone, by BAs, PRP to fix the broken parts. Because you're going to screw up something. My wife tore a rotary cuff, what, a month ago exercising? We injected it twice in four days, and within a week she has no pain and rotary cuff tear. Ozone's an amazing tool. Build a solid legal structure. Now I say this because I actually, in doing malpractice reviews, I coach lots of doctors through that pain of that whole thing. I've done 35 years of malpractice reviews. And I see him just being ripped apart by attorneys. Has nothing to do with what they did. 95% of the time the doctor was not wrong at all. It's purely people wanting money. I carry no malpractice insurance. I don't tell all of you to do that. I'm just telling you I don't but I don't own anything. We have a legal structure set up that's pretty unpierceable. I own nothing. So I say, you know, go for it. And that's, you know, that's a hard one to do. And I'm just telling you, if you all want discussion about it, you can talk to me. But if you don't do it, you're at risk more so now than ever before. We have more attorneys than we ever had and they are bored and they want to make money. Figure the end game. Keep doing what you love. I only do things I like anymore. If I don't like it, I don't do it. It's pure and simple. I pick what I like to do. I love coming here and speaking. And tomorrow I'll go speak again. I love to talk. You can stick me up in a crowd anywhere. I'll talk to anybody about anything. Love to do it. So it's fun to be able to do it. It's satisfying to be able to help people. So find what you love. If you love doing sexual health, do sexual health. If you like aesthetics, get good at it. Let me help you with it. If you want to do joints, be good at it. You know, pick your passion. Sometimes you need to sort through what you're doing. Evaluate what your office looks like and see where you want to go with it. So, the trifecta. Ozone, allografts, and preconditioning. It's really simple. We make it too complicated a lot of times. Simplify your life and the way you do things and why you do it. Make it fun again. Take the stress out of it. Live the dream. You must drink the Kool-Aid. Patients must see you as a beacon of health. Use all items above and grow. Always ask questions. We'll keep you moving forward. And avoid being hung up on evidence-based medicine. If I had to wait for a procedure to be proved out that I've done now, I'd be dead at even at 139. I wouldn't even make it. Don't be afraid to look with good bases to go forward with things. There's an amazing amount of studies out there, if you look at them, that tell you a lot of things. Make sure you're looking for safe outcomes. So educate, walk the talk, start your family and yourself on the program. How many of you out here do the stuff that you recommend to patients all the time? Cool. A third of you. So what happened to the other two-thirds of you? You know, sometimes we're kind of hypocritical on ourselves. I'm not picking on any of you. I've been guilty of it in the past, and I'm trying to do better. Just keep improving that. Keep, take one step at a time. Change that paradigm. Choose to live to be 139. So today, you've got a choice. Turn left or right. Choose to live to the median age of 78 or choose to potentially live to be 139. We have an advanced class in August. For those who have done ozone before, we only take 15 docs. We have brochures passed out, information. More than happy to help all of you. I'll be here through tonight. Then I'm gone to Miami at midnight tonight. Thank you very much. Questions, answers, comments? Thank you. You're welcome, Frank. Thank you. You had a question? Go ahead. Yes. Half inch needle, 27 gauge, not over a cc and a half of product within any injection site. No. It spreads out all of the tissue there, so it hits it real easy. 
Oh yeah, you're going, you're going sub-Q, so you're going, so it spreads out all between the two layers of the skin and the muscle. So it's going to spread that whole area there. It's pretty much a no-brainer. It's kind of like a shotgun. The regen is from results RNA. We have some paperwork on it and your, your things there. We helped generate that product probably seven years ago. It's an energy-based product, and I like it. I use it in all my injections. All I use for my injections is the Regeneron product and a little B12, and then I use Procaine and then ozone, yes. Um, I just want to thank you. You cured my encapsulated hip about three or four years ago. Pretty awesome, huh? Prolithone, yeah, one injection, pretty cool. Um, can you tell us how much glutathione you're putting into the sub-Q injection? <laughs> <laughs> We actually use it with the results product has, has glutathione in it. It's an energy-based glutathione. It's only 4% glutathione, and the rest is energy-based. If most of you don't know energy-based medicine, energy-based medicine takes the footprint of the product and puts it in. So the nice thing about that, as opposed to using straight glutathione, is glutathione has an activating agent, and then you have the glutathione left. With this, you activate the cell without having the activating agent left there that's inactive. So it continually activates more cells. In other words, it has more effects than a single-use molecule. So we use it in the results product has a good time. We use it in IVs, yes? Will you discuss more about adrenal reset? No. <laughs> it's just stand up here and turn around, Frank. I'm going to show him real quick. Can you show you real quick? Do what now? Stand up here and turn around. Take off your clothes. <laughs> so we use a wheel, and I learned this from Klinghart, the wheel, and then we figured out the system. We'll go at T11. We'll do a little bleb, you know, just like a mosquito bite here, mosquito bite here, and right on the tip of T11. And you'll find it has amazing results. How I check them is very simple muscle test. If their arms, if straight forward, why don't you turn forward here, just for me, Frank, Frank. And hold it straight up, ask you to resist, hold it up. See his adrenals are shot, okay? <laughs> so what we would do is we would take and we would shoot him, because if we checked his legs, he'd be weak also, I can guarantee you. So both arms would be weak, his legs would be weak. We do that, it immediately changes it. And what's really fun about it is I'll take and I'll check, like I'll check a neck place. I had a patient last week, chronic neck pain forever. Checked her neck, which is neck sore right there. He's got a little bit of a shoulder issue, okay? So I'll check those. And the, so what I've done is I turned the neurological system on to tell the brain that we have an issue there. When I do the adrenal reset, the neck pain will go away and the shoulder pain will go away immediately. It's the coolest thing you've ever seen. So when you do the adrenal reset, and again, just a little bit of 2% procaine, just under the skin, looks like a mosquito bite, half inch needle, bend the needle up, bevel up, and go into the skin, just bury under the skin. And you'll be amazed how many symptoms just are gone immediately. I, get, I do a low back reset, we do four spots. I get people so acute, I can't even touch them. And I don't want to put ozone into an acute low back, but I'll do the, the procaine reset. And 90% of the time, 85% of the pain's gone, even acute disc, and then I can work on them. So I do a little tricks like that. I, do, I have a, several little tricks in the bag like that that I teach doctors. But that's a really good one. Adrenal reset, you guys will love that. That's the coolest thing you'll ever do. Thank you. Anything else real quick? You can catch me later if you want to talk. You got any good jokes? I'm always open with that. Do you have a question? No, nope, you're just scratching the neck? Good. Go ahead, one. No, 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 it probably was my mumbling, sorry. Well, thank you very much, I enjoyed it. Oh, one question, go ahead. Sorry, how many gamma were you injecting in the testes? We do 20 gamma for most of our joints. Oh, the testes? Uh, that we dropped to 10 gamma and 10 cc's. Five to 10, yeah, it depends how much screaming they do. I'd probably do three to five is what I'd actually do with 10 gamma. Realize the Europeans have said this, that when you go above 12 gamma, it burns, below 10 gamma, it heals. So just realize in any sensitive areas, when we do penis injections, we do 10 gamma, just so you know that. If you want it to burn, you don't like the person who used 20 gamma. Because <laughs> we do lots of, you know, again, we do the P shots and O shots, and a lot of times just with ozone. And it's amazing what it does. We use the biological allographs also, we use PRP with them, but the ozone, and as Dr. Milgram was saying, really is a good follow-up to adjunct all the stuff you're doing. So I'll get out of your hair. I'm done. If, if these guys go to your website, can they get in? Go to the website, get information, cards in the back, at Shirley. More than happy to talk to you, whatever I can do. Thanks. Pleasure, young lady. Nice to see you again. So whatever I can do to help you guys, I'm here. So. Okay, Dr. Harper.